Welcome to RM World Coins Collection and Investment. Hopefully, uh, you're enjoying uh, the videos that I recently updated uh, on my channel, and hopefully, uh, I've got over 500 videos so far. And I'm growing my channel, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please help me out. Uh, sub subscribe to my channel, and you'll get notified as I upload more videos this week and next week during the holiday seasons and hopefully more next year. I'm always buying and always selling. So I'll have new coins all the time. And as long as I have the time to do it, definitely I'm gonna to try to teach everybody how to collect. You're a beginner, intermediate, or good speculative investor. Uh, look at my channel, see what you can acquire, get them at a good price, or if you can afford it, get the best you can. These coins will continue to increase in value. So if you're familiar with U.S. coins, everything in the U.S. is extremely expensive. Morgan dollars, peace dollars, barber, seeded, everything you can't afford, okay? The U.S. world coins will also do something similar, but it's, an, it's a time where you can still afford them, okay? So if you can't afford U.S. coins, move in something that you like, world coins. So if you like a specific country that I like, I like England, I like Panama, I like South Africa, I like uh, Canada, okay? I like the British Commonwealth coins, okay? I like uh, Mexican coins, Central America. I like uh, South uh, America. I like, uh, you know, some South, uh, I like some African country coins, you know, Eritrea, Ethiopia. Uh, I like uh, European coins, Russia, China. I can't, they're over, kind of oversaturated and too expensive in China. Uh, everybody's collecting China. To me, they're overvalued. Uh, but I say the China, the China has got a lot of money. So they, more people are collecting their own coins and they kind of push the, the, the value way out of the, skies okay so i don't i i, I kind of avoid the china coin but if you like uh, russia uh you like nepal burma okay korea you know i mean these coins are still affordable right now are sleeper coins in my opinion okay so collect them while you can afford them or because u.s coins right now are crazy money you can't afford them Okay, uh, get in some good world coins, demand coins, and I'm showing you some of these coins that will increase in value and hopefully you'll pick up on them. But again, do your due diligence and know what you're buying, okay? So what we have here today are three coins, all certified NGC, uh, come from different countries, from Austria, from Singapore, and South Africa, okay? I collect these coins over and over again. I sell them, I gotta replenish my inventory, so I try to find them if I come across them, and they're a nice value and the condition is right, okay? The quality is there. I definitely wanna purchase them and put them aside and add them to my inventory, okay? So, look at these coins, and we're gonna go through a few things about these coins, and hopefully you can pick up that information and knowledge, and if you do come across them, at least it will give you an idea if you want to purchase these coins. Uh, the first coin that I like is from uh, Austria. I mean, these are nice coins. This is a 1908 Five Corona. Uh, there is a series of uh, Five Coronas that they made. Uh, so there's, I think, probably six different dates. Along with that, they have also two Gildan coins. Uh, earlier, uh, 1879, which is a very popular coin. Now it's just moving up like crazy. A lot of them have been circulated, impaired, uh, hairline, clean. So finding a mint state coin is getting diff difficult. This one here is a one-year type uh, because the design, but there's, I think, five different dates, uh, 1900 to, I think, I think this is the last year. Okay, maybe one 19, 1910, okay? But uh, this one here is just a gorgeous, uh, conservatively graded MS-62. This is a beautiful coin. It is a one-year coin. Normally, they have, they'll have the eagle on the reverse, but this one does not. Okay, so this one here is a nice detail on the beard, the hair, exceptionally clean fields. 
So here, this one here is a gorgeous coin. NMS 65, it would probably run you, I don't know, say between eight and fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, I haven't seen one yet. Okay, I've seen 63. So this is a nice 62, and it's just a beautiful coin without any problem. And a close up look at it, definitely that's what you want to see on this coin. Okay, it's just luster, luster, luster. Detail on the beard, the hair, eyebrow, the nose, the head. Okay, so just a gorgeous coin on the reverse ah, there you go with the nice lady and this is why it's only a one-year type five kroner luster throughout just a gorgeous coin uh, maybe a, sli a slight contact in the field but it is not uh, detracting from the coin nice detail so this is a 1908 a lot of them, uh, you'll see impairment, circulation, uh, field issues. So get one that is, uh, you know, as nice as this, okay? Put it aside. The value of this 1908 used to be like $100. Now they're running between three and 500 depending on how nice the coin is. So this is just a gorgeous one-year type coin. So nice anniversary coin. This coin here will continue to increase in value, especially in gorgeous mint state condition. So Australia, Austria has lots of nice coins. Uh, two Gildens earlier from the early uh, late uh, 1800s. And these coins here from the 1900s and modern proofs also, okay? With low mintages are also and. uh uh, coins from Austria that you can check out. But this is one of the days that I like. Just a gorgeous coin, highly desirable. Will continue to increase in value. So that's a nice coin. Uh, next one I like is I always try to pick up if I can get a good deal is this uh, Singapore Key Date 1972, $10 in ultra cameo proof. So this one here is really nice. So if you do come across this coin here, note vintage on this coin is probably around what five or six thousand coins, if I'm correct, or maybe it's around two thousand coins. Okay, but it is a, a key date low vintage coin, a nice ultra cameo, nice mirror field. Uh, sometimes these fields will be definitely cloudy, so if it's too cloudy, avoid it uh, unless you get a good price. But most likely, if it's too cr cloudy you're going to end up dipping it to remove that cloudiness so you can see the, you know, the difference between the background and the foreground, okay? So here, this one here, I'm lucky that it is certified. It does show some contrast between the background and foreground. And it is a low mintage. I think 2,000 coins were made on this coin. So this is a gorgeous coin. And of course, this is from Singapore. It is a uh, quiet market there. But once they realize that their coins are rare and they collect their own coins or the countries around there collect their own coins, the value will continue to increase on these nice low mintage proof coins. Uh, on the reverse, you know, their, their coat of arms, 1972, Singapore. So just a gorgeous coin, highly desirable, okay? This is a coin that if you do come across, I suggest you put it aside if you can afford it um, this coin should run you between three to six hundred depending on how nice it is okay so just a gorgeous coin uh, next coin uh, I, I like definitely this is uh, south africa as i mentioned i love collecting coins from south, south africa they are uh, like a sleeper country you can pick up all their five shillings at a good value, but when they get to MS 65, 66, or 67, or even 68, the prices are going crazy, okay? But if you're looking just for a basic, nice uh, coin, you should be able to uh, afford it. Uh, this one here is the key date, 1959, five shilling. is in proof 65. Uh, mintage on this one here is between eight and 1,200 coins, so it's a very small mintage because... Uh, at that particular year, they only made so many numbers in proof sets, and that was the lowest vintage proof sets that they made. And of course, this is being a proof. This is something that was uh, removed from the proof set. 
So, uh, so it's a broken up proof set, and this is graded proof 66. So it is a pretty high grade, very conservatively graded. Uh, this coin is better than what I've seen that are 67 or 68. Uh, so uh, be sure you are familiar with it. If 66 looks this nice, uh, no need to improve on it, okay? You're not just uh, going to 67 or 68 and pay that extra money. You're not trying to get, uh, you know, the population number, if that's what you're looking for, low population. If you're only looking for a nice sample that will continue to grow, definitely uh, 65 or 66 is more than enough in grade. And if they're this nice, great. The one that's rarer than the proof is the BU, the regular business strike or the proof like, okay? Again, the vintages on the BU, I have not seen a nice 65 in a BU, frosted BU for quite some time. And to me, there's only a few handful of that coin in the commercial B, BU strike. The proof like, it's almost similar to the proof with I think a vintage of a couple thousand coins. Okay, but either way, the 1959 five shilling in BU proof like or proof are all scarce okay in those three types okay so if you come across them great if you want to collect all three types that's also great okay be sure you know the difference okay because sometimes the proof like and the proof looks almost similar uh, the BU you can tell it's got luster okay so <laughs> that, that's the thing to me I prefer the BU I think to me that is a sleeper coin. The proof I can get anytime, okay? The proof like I can get anytime. The actual BU is the hard coin to get, okay? Definitely. And on the reverse, you got a nice buck. And again, 59, this is just a gorgeous coin. Highly desirable. Some of these proof you'll see hairlines, okay? Sometimes what, what you'll see is, not, is the hairlines are basically from dye polish. So they are raised, okay? They're not into the coin, but they're out of the coin surface. They're raised because they're polished. So know the difference between a hairline versus a raised line that is from dye polish, okay? Be familiar with that. And if you're not familiar with that, Google it up between a polished line versus a hairline, okay? Know the difference between the two. And so when you do come across it and you examine the coin, you know, if it's raised, it's polished lines. If it's into the surface, it's a hairline, okay? Or a clean coin. Be careful. Know the difference, okay? Again, the 59, highly desirable date. Always, I like to collect. If you like the, the this started from 1947 and continues on till 1964. And I like the 47, 48, 49, and 50. The rest are pretty cheap, but the, th the first three, four is difficult, and of course the 59, okay? But if you're able to collect the whole series, you'll have a nice collection. So if you come across 1959, five shillings, definitely a key date to find. And if you get the BU, you'll have a better coin, because as of yet, I haven't found one that I like or seen at all. All I see is proofs or proof-like. So know the difference between the three, and definitely, if you come across the BU, contact me. I'd love to hear it. And I'd love to see a picture of it. If you do see one, that's an actual BU with full luster. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh, hopefully the videos I have uh, uploaded, you'll like and enjoy and give you some good knowledge. The three I've showed you from Austria, Singapore, South Africa, all are pretty good coins to collect. Put it aside, let it sleep, let it wait your, you know, in your collection. Uh, be sure if it's rare, be sure to get it certified. Be sure you place them in an airtight holder so they don't uh, wake up uh, five, ten years and they're darkly toned, okay? Be sure to put them in an airtight container, like in a capsule, okay? If you're not familiar with capsules, let me bring one out here. Uh, I have capsules here that are airtight, okay? So this is one capsule that I like to put it in. Uh, so if you put these expensive coins on the flip, 
they will turn colors because air can get to it. So this is one type. And another type that I like is this one here, okay, with the special uh, size to correct it. So this, will, this too will be airtight. So get these products for your coin if they're of value. You don't want to wake up 10, 15 years down the road and then see all your coins dark toned, okay? And then all that money is wasted, okay? Now you got to treat your coins, clean your coins. You don't want to do that, okay? Get it airtight in capsules like this so you will not get it toned. Be sure that they're tight. They're tight, okay? They're tight. And so it will not turn color. It will retain its beauty. And then when you do sell it, you're not going to get unhappy uh, on the coins that, you know, you're selling because they're too heavily towed. And you don't see the nice detail on these coins. This coin here is a, what is it, a 1947 Blunt 7. I want to be able to sell it 10, 15 years down the road. And it's going to be the same when I look at it again 10, 15, 20 years down the road and its value will continue to appreciate and I'm not gonna get disappointed or if I give it to my children, when they do sell it, they're not gonna be disappointed because they will have buyers eager to buy these coins, okay? So it's always good to keep your coins protected, especially if they're rare. So you got two types of capsules to think about. So you got the one with the seal. They're both pretty airtight, okay? I like this one better because definitely that will fully protect it and push out all that air so it's not gonna turn colors. And of course, if you want it better, get it certified by NGC or PCGS and these will always be airtight sealed, okay? So they will not change color, okay? So get that, okay? Well, hopefully uh, you get some good information and if you think that's good, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I want you to enjoy the channel and I want you to help me grow my channel. Uh, give me the like, comments, okay, ring the bell so you'll get notified. I just did a few videos today, so take a look at them and hopefully you'll enjoy them. And if you have any questions or comments, by all means send it to me and I'll respond the best I can on your comments or questions, okay? Till next time. You have a great day collecting and happy holidays.